And this is the first rally to be ever held in the world. It started from Saudi. So what's the sign? The sign that Saudi is now in the golden age for motorsports. Hello and welcome to The May Man Show. We're coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And today we have a very active uh, person in the sports industry, the motorsports industry to be precise. We have Falah Jarba. Thank you very much for being with us, uh, Falah. Thank you. Uh, and Falah, you're, you're, you know, you, I mean, you're very, uh, you're an advent uh, promoter of, of the motorsports industry in Saudi. You've been here, you, you've been... Um, partaking and participating in lots of sporting uh, motorsports uh, act- activities and events uh, before we get into all that. Um, what's, what's, what's the latest project you're doing right now? We're now working on uh, a big uh, motor festival. You've seen the changes in Saudi. Now Saudi is having more than one international motorsport in the same season, which didn't happen anywhere else. So mm-hmm. Saudi started changing in motorsport uh before 2018 maybe people think that 2018 was the first change where we got formula e but you know that this had to be cooked for two years three years minimum to okay. have it so we started the formula e then we got dakar rally which is the longest rally and most international uh, uh most famous and international rally mm-hmm. or the hardest so and exclusively in saudi for the t- for 10 years okay uh, then, uh, why am I saying all these motorsports? Because this is where we switched from being a racer or a team owner, or okay. we started into influencing, then we started into uh, building and uh, having some grassroots uh, people, I don't want to say kids, or enthusiasts, how to switch them from being a fan mm-hmm. into being a marshal, uh, to have at least, or a photographer, or a videographer, or a medic, or whatever. To have the ecosystem and infrastructure exactly. available at hand. Because people think, us, we we racers thought that if we win a race, sponsors would just come and knock on our doors. And that was the biggest mistake. And it is a still big mistake with some Saudi racers. Mm-hmm. Uh, corporates would never go just for the winner if you couldn't fulfill their KPIs at the end. Okay. Even if it was under CSR, even if it was... Uh, it's always uh, it always comes back to numbers so let's go back jumping on the first formula one formula e dakar we've got the first uh, we've got the first electric rally which was in neom okay started in Urla, neom this is the first rally to be ever held in the world it started from saudi so what's the sign the sign that saudi is now in the golden age for motorsports right. and the minister and the ministry team didn't stop there this is where us just being racers would be a big uh, gap in our career if you couldn't switch. So we've tried to be, we started as a racer, then a team owner, then uh, a championship organizers, because mm-hmm. we saw where was the gap. We know where did it, uh, where did it need some fixing, All right. uh, what really bothered us. So now we're doing even uh, some tire barriers, some safety for the Formula One track, Mm -hmm. which is uh, something that we are proud, me and my team and the Saudis that worked with us, for us having, uh, doing the tire barriers for a safety thing in Formula One, having the big names come in and uh, doing some side visits. When you could see the system that's happening now in Saudi, everyone started watching Formula One. Everyone started uh, knowing more information about motorsports, mm-hmm. uh, women's rally. You have to be there. So this is what we're in now. We're at like 360. They wanted us racing. They wanted us uh, organizing, influencing, uh, getting some uh, rookies into the system, starting from karting to, to, to whatever. So we're it's like a wave, and we just got our surfboard and got on the wave. Okay, and uh, you've been riding this wave uh, since uh, before it uh, it peaked. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you you know you've 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 been in the uh, the motorsports industry for how many years now? I started unprofessionally two thousand ten. Two thousand ten, so roughly eleven years now. Yeah, I, I would say ten because it was just like me or anyone who's watching okay. or even listening. Mm-hmm. 
I started by coincidence. I had a uh, Camaro. I, there was a, a underground race. And it was so easy just to try. And I got kicked out from the first round. Okay. How yeah. did you get kicked out? What was... I? It was the first time I was wearing a helmet in a car. Okay. It was the first time I got my branding for my company on the car. Then, you know, in a race, they have to put their branding. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the idea at that time. So I removed their branding which had the car number, I know. And I was a bit huger than size matter. Uh So I couldn't drive with a helmet, so I removed the helmet. So they disqualified me. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me in motorsports for the 10 years. Because I tried, why? Uh, I tried to talk to them, they're like, no way. I was like, you're doing a big mistake. I'm a winner, I know myself. And it was the first race I've never, ever stood on a podium in motorsports. Mm -hmm. So 2011, I entered, I won. But I was still, I was me and the guys just racing. We needed sponsors, we needed income, we needed uh, just like any uh, proper racing team. So Mm -hmm. we started learning from, from companies, from watching. They said, you need name. So you need a name, a racing name. It's so hard to put a big corporate name with your name. Mm -hmm. We need to have a racing name, Bullet, for example, uh, Lightning, Speed, Sonic, whatever. All right. So that was a second challenge. uh, And I didn't want to. So why would I change? So I did it FJR, which stands for Falah al Jalba Racing. Okay. So the same sponsor who told me, just get a name and come back. He was like, is it Fajr al I was like, no. Is it Fajr al I was like, no. <laughs> it's just FJR. <laughs> it's FJR. He said, what does it mean? I said, Falah al He said, I'm sorry. Change the name, we'll give you. And then I started working on having my name with any international company. Mm-hmm. And as we always said, you start cheap, you'll die cheap. You start big, you'll continue big. And uh, it was all from, يعني, alhamdulillah. Uh, God's willing. God's willing. So 2015, we got the ambassadorship. Mm-hmm. I've started with the Chevrolet, Bridgestone, uh, Shell Oils, uh, and all biggest name, but all into motorsport. Mm-hmm. We've got some opportunities with some uh, watches, perfumes, but it doesn't fit exactly into automotive. Okay. Uh, Unless it's like a, a the specific brand was not uh, related to the motorsports industry, it would give you what anyone would need. It okay. would cover your expenses, but it's not influencing hundred percent. I couldn't talk about perfumes. I know this is wrong even to say here. Okay, no, it's fine. I, and I'm clo- Speak your I'm, mind. <laughs> I'm closing any opportunity. Okay, uh, you need experience to be influencing. You mm-hmm. need. You just don't need numbers, eyeballs. It's easy always to get people okay. watch, come visit, buy once. But whenever it's so hard to get them back again, it's so hard to really give them proper information that they couldn't reach even online. Mm-hmm. Uh, car media, which is the biggest problem in Saudi, mm-hmm. you're in the media for a decade more. Well, me, I, I grew up in this industry. So <laughs> yeah, let's just put it that way. That's why you couldn't find a lot of uh, people writing into motorsport. Mm-hmm. You did right. three or four times. You had the knowledge. Others would be scared of write, writing a wrong information. It's not about the demand. Saudi proved that motorsport is the second biggest sports in Saudi. Mm-hmm. You've seen the numbers, you've seen the attendance. Uh, we've covered the attendance of any soccer game in Saudi that ever has been made. Yeah. I mean, and Saudi in general is a country that loves motor, motor, motor sports, the, the, the motor industry in general. Exactly. Let's just put it that way. Exactly. Either it was legal or unlegal. Yeah. And that's how Saudi was famous mm-hmm. in the U.S. When they watched some drifting uh, videos. Maybe you and anyone remembers the Hyundai accent video when someone was sliding with his... Yeah. Uh, I mean, don't, do you, we don't have to go that very far. I mean, I remember a very old classic uh, video for BBC's Top Gear. Showing, you know, this the is Saudi video. drifting. That's the video I'm talking about. <laughs> it was a Toyota about. Camry, if I wasn't mistaken. Yeah. And they put it the other uh, other car. Yeah. So, uh, Saudi proofed, but there was not enough media. Because they're scared. They had they needed the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Car media. People would just read whatever 
the leaflet holder said, I want to buy a car. I don't want it to tell me how many horsepower. I don't want it to tell me, does it have uh, cruise control? Cruise control. Okay. I don't want it to tell me that has Such an archaic control. feature nowadays, right? <laughs> exactly. Some words, they need someone who would give them the story about this company, how did it start, and these things. And mm-hmm. motorsport is always, why do why do manufacturers and cars go into Formula One? Mm-hmm. It's a loss. You you know how much does it cost for engines, for a car, billions okay billions they're paying why it's a proof that we can if we wanted yeah so motorsports or formula one is we can and then we could sell mm-hmm. more it's just to show your legacy as a car manufacturing brand Let's exactly just and stretching your muscles we yeah. can uh that's why some concept cards come yeah people would say why do they have this concept car it's 16 cylinders 18 it's we can if we want to mm-hmm. but it's it's not profitable so drifting is a controlled chaos entertainment race. It's where anyone's nightmare, driving or racing, when a car drifts, that's your nightmare. That's when you lose control. So uh, drifting happens to the moment that the only piece in the car, as big as it is, as small as it is, the contact between the tarmac is felt and the whole car is only the tires, mm-hmm. which doesn't exceed more than one centimeter. Everyone thinks whatever the tire was, why no? The contact is very small because if you look at the tire, okay. this is the only piece that is touching the tarmac. So when the smoke starts coming out of the tire, it's where the rubber evaporates immediately, mm-hmm. not into being something liquid. Okay. Because you know, most of the things it goes from hard to liquid yeah. to um, evaporates or. Uh, evaporates, turns into. Um smoke dust whatever whatever yeah yeah smoke so drifting no you're skipping the liquid part mm-hmm. you're going immediately there's no time from solid to eva- uh, to evaporation and this is where you need to be so fast faster than any semiconductor processor because mm-hmm. mistakes are by milliseconds where you could keep your car controlled and drifting not into the proper way and uh, you would always win the love of the uh, audience, the crowd. Mm-hmm. You would, they don't really care about the position. Media car, uh, sponsors would go for the position, but always there's two trophies in drifting. That's whatever position you took, and there's the uh, love of the public. Love of the fans, which the adulation. Is, w- exactly, which yeah. is the hardest, Okay. which is the best, which is what really gives you anything later that you want because if you win them you're done all right and uh you've done all sorts of races so you've done drifting time lapse races which how many races have you uh, participated in what makes each one different okay i started in drifting then i wanted to test myself am i a drifter or am i a professional racer Mm -hmm. i went into autocross i won I took a championship. I went into GT, mm-hmm. which is time attack. Yeah. Or it's almost time attack. GT is uh, seven races in two points. I took first position, kingdom wide. Mm-hmm. And every car is different. So drifting was with a Chevy Camaro. Uh, autocross was with a Corvette, with Viper. I And I used my own uh, daily used car. This was the biggest challenge. This okay. is where people loved that thing. Because it's not a proper full race car built that it's... It's not a racing spec vehicle. It's, it's just like daily use. It's just like when you win a gunfight with a water gun. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> this is exactly it. how do you put it. All right. So imagine you win a gunfight with a water gun. Mm-hmm. People would just not fall in love with you. People would... You're going to be their idol, their icon. This is where it's going to be more effort on you because you're going to have to reply every single question because what are we selling we're selling safety and mm-hmm. another thing that anyone could be a professional racer All right. i'm always telling my story yes i did start uh not in circuits where there wasn't circuits in saudi mm-hmm. i had to everyone had to no one could say they've never tried to drift maybe you mm-hmm. me yeah. the guys here no i never have but it's all good <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> even if you were in a compound you have to mm-hmm. any teenager would love to do it look at any kids looking at a red uh, racing car immediately they would love and start uh, pointing Mm -hmm. this is where anyone loves so let's go back uh gt then i tried time attack so 
I try a new place. I move on the moment I win a championship. It's just like having a trophy on whenever I want to retire back, whenever I want to talk to my kids, mm -hmm. whenever I want to tell my kids, yeah, your dad raced here, won here, at least once. Okay. So one time is enough for me. And I had, I was more hungry for motorsports. Drifting was seven, eight, nine rounds, which is the most rounds in motorsport. Mm -hmm. There was three autocross, three GT. So I wanted them all. I wanted to race more. I wanted to challenge myself. I was enjoying. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the team bigger. My team still races till now. I started yeah. with one guy and now we're having another guy. The team is bigger. So I did the hill climb, the first hill climb Saudi ever did. Okay. Uh, and we influence inf and we influenced the the motorsport industry of having these types of races mm -hmm. cuz drifting 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 you're going to need to make space mm -hmm. definitely uh, younger people would come and be hard to beat we're aging okay so uh, we wanted to change so we raced in hill climb we won it it happened 3 years maybe or 4 years uh, it was one race uh, since it started till it finished we okay. won in every single race All right. and we didn't use the same car so I used the first year a car the second year another car the third year another car it's okay. always challenging it's enjoying uh, so GT autocross we just uh, try and uh, the challenge is where you couldn't win in a race. Okay. So the, the, you know, the fact that you like to uh, basically try your, test your might, I guess, in, in different aspects of, of motorsports, have you decided of expanding it uh, to complement how motorsports is expanding here in Saudi? Have you ever thought of doing a Dakar rally or a Formula E or a Formula One? E, I'm not a fan of electric, I know. Yeah, well, you could do Formula One then. I'm going to need 30 years to, if I wanted the <laughs> Formula One, I'm going to need 30 years of training. And to be honest, uh -huh. uh, with all humbleness, I couldn't reach there. Okay. It's not only me. In the whole era of Formula One, mm -hmm. which is not 50, more than 50 years, there have never been in the whole history of Formula One a Saudi or an Arab driver. Okay. So. When someone wants to enter Formula One, they start before they even reach 18. All right. So it's not an option for maybe, I'll talk on behalf of myself. Maybe okay. some people wouldn't love to hear this, but uh, it's too late for us. Mm -hmm. And it's too hard. Our companies, you need sponsors and it's always manufacturers. The whole sponsors that I worked with, uh, most American or they're not into Formula One. Right. It's always European, Japanese. Yeah, I mean, Formula One is is, is is more of a European. It's it's more of a continental sport yeah. than than in the U.S. Yeah. All right. So, you know, from from your own personal perspective and opinion, uh, how have you seen this basically evolve the public's interest in attending these events, and also how have you seen this? evolve as far as knowledge transfer for people who are partaking like the racers or drifters or and what have you like how have you seen this complement the change uh, when people start watching motorsports this is where you could have two positive things two positive things number one our people aren't that not educated because people who watch motorsports are mm -hmm. mostly well educated yeah uh, I'm not saying that soccer uh, people who watch are not, but soccer is the uh, what, uh, so what, you know, soccer. It has another is, name is, in Arabic, but know, it's, uh, we it's, don't want it's, it's the sport of, of, of the kingdom, but do not under not kingdom, you know, of, of, of the world in general. But like yeah. it's it's the mo if we had to say it's the most what's the most popular sport in Saudi Arabia would have to be football. But do not underestimate yes the volume or population that loves motorsports because I think. Uh, just the motor industry in general is something that's like embedded in Saudi roots and Saudi blood. Exactly. We love cars. <laughs> it's, it's, it's we do. Goes, that's just and goes. it's the most expensive mm -hmm. sports, not motor, sports ever. Costing, owning, driving, whatever. Mm -hmm. And people might think that, it, and it's a good business for someone if he was a winner, a racer who worked on himself. 
Yeah. Yes, it would be a good daytime job. Okay. And that's a dream. People would always say, you're going to be lucky if you worked what you love. Mm -hmm. I, w I always had a different say. It's no, you're lucky if you changed what you love into work. It's okay. not working what you love. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's whatever you love, change it into an income, mm -hmm. change it into a business. Mm -hmm. So you could maintain doing what you love. It's going to need, it's a formula. You need income, outcome, that's it. Yeah. And you could continue whatever okay. you're doing. And you're going to do it perfect. So people started into motorsport. People started wearing motorsport things, which isn't cheap. Mm -hmm. People started getting more educated whenever they get more educated into motorsport this is where they could start watching other countries start uh watching the racers life start contributing when you have 10 20 30 international racers coming here to saudi mm -hmm. they're going to be driven by saudis they're going to be hosted by saudis they're mm -hmm. going to be uh escorted by escorted. Saudis. they're going to see the saudi culture they're going to experience you know like for example we were talking about the first yeah. Uh, Formula E, you know, so they were there, they were exposed to cultural events, they were exposed to concerts where international music acts were playing in Saudi, they were seeing... And they the would whole... be the influencers <clears throat> for Saudi, because they're going to have some content to talk in their country. Okay. They're going to need... Always a racer would need content mm -hmm. to talk to, to sell the media, give the media to have something to talk about and grab some attention. So when they came to Saudi, they have content. Okay. They saw that Saudi isn't whatever was sold to them by X or X Hollywood. Entity or, you know, Hollywood or whatever. Whatever. Okay. So, and they started being our ambassadors of Saudi mm -hmm. indirectly, which has more effect than Saudi promoting itself. Okay. You know, just like a company telling you we have the best coffee. Mm -hmm. And when you hear it from a third party, those have the best coffee, yeah. which would have a better effect, a third party. So third these, party, yeah. these racers, and they have good numbers of followers, and they would have content. Mm -hmm. So this is how it contributed with the people. They were escorted, uh, uh, had uh, meet, uh, meetings with them, talking with them, asking with them, selfies yeah. with them. Exactly. Eating this, their food, uh, you know, they, staying in their hotels. Exactly. It's, it's not only motorsports mm -hmm. uh, in general. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's like, uh, it's, 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 it's an ecosystem. It's, it's a, you know, it's horizontal sectors, you know, that yeah. make this, uh, make this thrive. And, uh, you know, getting back to catching attention and, you know, being a winning brand, uh, you're, 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 you're the, um, ambassador for Chevrolet in the middle, Middle East region. Correct. Uh, how did that happened how were you approached for this uh, by the way it started in a very funny uh or uh it was a post from chevrolet mm -hmm. they reached to all the camaro owners in the middle east okay uh, on their website to just apply for their cars mm -hmm. just put them and we're gonna do a contest a yearly contest mm -hmm. so this contest was uh just uh having videos of the car they've sent it to the team out of gt team okay. they came uh yeah i don't know if you're gonna kill out of gt okay so they in the hood. <laughs> hey, so they got out of gt and they came and take videos then they shortlisted it into 100 cars uh and all the countries was saudi kuwait jordan yeah most of the middle east countries then they shortlisted it into 50 Mm -hmm. Then they shortlisted it into 10, then they shortlisted it into 5, and then 1. Okay. So I won the voting. It was a voting, uh, and it was yearly. Mm -hmm. So uh, second year, they called it off, and then they officially announced me as the brand ambassador. Okay. And the uh, Camaro King, which is... Uh, following me everywhere people still and yeah, people call it, you the camaro king that's yeah your, when i read moniker, huh? <laughs> when i read camaro king uh, with a comment i immediately know this is coming from egypt or jordan mm -hmm. when i'm uh, hearing abu amira i know that those are saudis who watched the video for me revealing the car mm -hmm. because of amira was one of the guys called me in the video 
uh, when someone called, you know, I started tracing whoever calls me uh, and I, I, I do some uh, studying with myself. So are you from Egypt, Jordan? He's like, yeah, I'm from Jordan. Mm -hmm. So, and then they shut the contest for every year and they kept it. Okay. So they didn't do a second year because the pro the idea was having a brand ambassador every year. So they're satisfied with their selection. They I don't want. They didn't need uh, to do another one anymore. Huh? We we're both happy. We're both okay. satisfied. What was your video, by the way? Uh, for the Khmer King. Yeah, for the contest. Yeah, exactly. What's what's what no no? The... They did the whole edit. It's just to come to take a video of the car. Ah, okay. Nothing. Just right. so what what modifications? That's it. Yeah, whatever you modified the car. So. Uh, that time I had three cars, but I took one in the contest mm -hmm. and it was my winning car. And, uh, you know, it was still in that year. And they had the first, the sixth, the sixth generation of the Camaro. Okay. And that the prize was uh, a trip to the States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that where it became so nice. So good uh, to be true. We went to the States. They presented me as this guy is the winner. Mm-hmm of a contest okay and our brand ambassador then i sat with the guys in the factory i started asking questions they're like are you sure this guy is just a camaro owner because the knowledge was there the questions was there mm -hmm. he predicted some things that was there then mm -hmm. we had more time to sit together we extended the stay for two more days and then we're uh, that's where it really started from the marketing team uh, in the factory into our regional office in yeah. Dubai and then here. And it stayed. Then I went, then I got approached by tires. Okay. Uh, one, the first approach was by a tier three, mm -hmm. which I didn't really want to go there because I always say, you start cheap, you're going to die cheap. Okay. So I had four names. One of these four names I would accept to carry the name on which would add mm -hmm. to me and i could add to them because mm -hmm. when a sponsor comes and he is really well armed and good name it would be easier for you to talk without feeling guilt if you had some conscience in you as an influencer okay it was May a product you believe in basically exactly so then i got sponsored by bridgestone tires 2016 that was a year after two years after uh, uh general motors and uh now i'm carrying more than a uh, brand name last one was uh, shell uh, oils okay no one uh, which is with ferrari formula one for years okay. so, and i always contribute with followers i never forget them because if it wasn't them mm -hmm. and the media no one would ever know you yeah. Some winning. Oh, you're the easiest person for me to get a hold of. I've had been, <laughs> I, we've had a nice uh, professional working relationship for over three years. Yeah. And you're always a WhatsApp message away. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I usually ask my, uh, my, my guests if there's a message they'd like to give to our Arab news uh, audience. Uh, you know, aside from take calculated risks, <laughs> which I'm yeah. sure is something you would say. Yeah. Uh, what is yours? Uh, I'm proud being here in this show. Mm -hmm. Uh, Arab News was a very good partner and uh, having the power to come and write whatever you wrote last time, that was uh, uh, a change in our media. Okay. Uh, we've always had some humble media there. Mm -hmm. Having the information that you wrote, having I'm having a lot of people. I'm a risk taker in media, so that's, I know. that's, that's Th one thing. That's why you reached here. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, all expats, or 80% of the expats, mm -hmm. always have shared the Arab News uh, paper with me. Yeah. Always. It's not only because of the language. I've got other uh, media that did, but is it, I don't know, maybe you know where to put them? We've, we've had a pleasant time having you here on, on the show. We could talk to you for hours. And uh, that's, that's all the time we have uh, for this episode, dear viewers. Tune in next week uh, to the Mayman Show. Let's see who we will have next. Okay.